All right, everyone, it's Ronnie back here with RC Bassin. I'm out underneath the boat shed, and today we're going to give you a little tip on saving some money doing some maintenance on your Mercury uh, 50 horsepower four stroke. Um, and this one is on the back of my 2020 Bass Tracker Classic XL. I love this boat, love this motor. Um, and just a quick tip here to show you how to change oil on your boat motor uh, without spending a couple hundred bucks at Bass Pro or Cabela's or any other uh, marine shop. It's truly not necessary. Um, and this will save you some cash. Uh, maybe you can put some, some tackle back in your box or some other accessories on your boat. Um, so I've got my boat lifted up in the uh, tr uh, tilt or the uh, got the motor trimmed up um, so that I can get to the uh, oil drain plug and stuff easily. And I really just want to kind of go over some of the things that you're going to need to do this job. First off, you're going to need an 18 millimeter socket. Um, and that's for your your oil drain plug. Um, of course, a ratchet. I put an extension on mine just to make it easier to handle. Um, and then I've got an oil filter wrench mounted here. I've already got it slid on my oil filter. I uh, bought this at Advanced Auto. Um, I've got some other oil filter wrenches, but you don't have very much clearing in here between uh, this, this housing and your oil filter to really get a good grip on the filter and get it off. Um, and they're, pre they're pretty tight on there, and they get tight as they heat up. Um, so this one just kind of slides over the filter. It was like 13 bucks at Advanced Auto. It's a little bit more expensive oil filter wrench, but it's really good. I'll keep it to do these types of jobs. And then here I've already, of course, I've got the you know, engine cover off, but here's the, the oil, and you, you can get the oil kit. I ordered it on Amazon. Um, the manual recommends, you know, you, you can use Mercury oil or Quicksilver. It's really um, kind of one in the same. I think it's actually made by Mercury. Um, yeah, so you can see the Mercury motor emblem down here on the kit box and so i've got my my gear lube and my engine oil of course the blue moons over here are optional um they always go well with any type of maintenance job you're doing i recommend those in moderation while you're working on your boat um and so we'll we'll get started um so so i trimmed the engine back down um so you can kind of see back here is your oil filler cap um, and of course, it's good to go ahead and take that off before you drain the oil. That'll just kind of give you some air flowing in there to help the oil drain out. And it's pretty easy to locate. It's a big, bright yellow cap. Um, and there's no issue with you doing the maintenance yourself on the on these motors, provided you keep your keep track of your maintenance. Um, of course, over here I have the the uh, vessel view uh, mounted on my boat, and it allows me to record my maintenance. And actually track all the maintenance right through the vessel view app on my phone so it's really convenient um, if you don't have vessel view then you know you can write it down in your owner's manual and keep your receipts and that kind of stuff so that you can keep track if there's any ever any question um, you know you can prove your uh, the maintenance that you've conducted so I just had to drop the motor back down to show you this stuff um, and then of course over here on the other side is your your dipstick for checking your oil right down here so we'll go ahead and unlock that and pull it out a little bit to kind of, again let that air flow through there and help the oil drain all right hold on one second we're going to trim the motor back up and i'll be right all back. right we've got our motor trimmed back up and let's go ahead and pop out the oil drain plug 18 millimeter now this is probably going to come shooting out of here um i'm going to break it loose there so you want to kind of have your bucket pretty close by that's one of the things i failed to mention is you're going to need a bucket so you can catch the oil all right one of the things i forgot to mention too is if you tilt your motor or turn your motor uh to the side it'll help with the uh, oil draining out and then it's always a good idea to check your your drain plug uh, once you pull it out just to make sure there's no metal shavings or anything on there this one looks pretty clean and that's always a good sign and so we'll just wait here a minute for the oil to finish draining and then we'll fill her back up now it's always good before you put the drain plug back in to put a little bit of oil uh, back around the washer on here just to make sure everything seats real well so i always like to just put a little oil back on there and then wipe everything out before you put it back in 
it's important too to make sure you get it threaded up right you don't want to throw uh, cross thread your drain plug um, and then booger up the uh, threads inside the housing or on your drain plug uh, that wouldn't be good that's definitely a, a trip to the shop in my book if if that were to happen <clears throat> all right got that back in there let's tighten her back up and I'm just gonna snug that up good I'm not gonna really torque it down too much I don't think it's necessary to do that of course it probably wouldn't hurt to check it occasionally anyway but there you go drain plug is reinstalled and we're ready to move on with the job all right so we're gonna go in here loosen our oil filter got a little funnel here that comes with the kit just in case to keep any spills from occurring while you're taking it out but it should be pretty empty with it uh, trimmed all the way up and then turning the motor over to the side it should have emptied the filter out pretty good and she's off and really no spillage uh, whatsoever we'll go ahead here and just wipe everything down just inspect that oil filter housing again just kind of check and make sure you have no oil shavings or anything or metal shavings or anything on there looks really clean no problem and then we've got our new filter quicksilver it's always good to take a little bit of oil, wet that ring down to make sure it seats well. You don't want to put it on there dry to heat up and your gasket to seize up on the oil filter housing um, until your filter, you know, fills back up with oil and recirculates. It's kind of good to put a little oil on there. And then again, this is another one where you want to be careful. Take your time. Make sure you don't cross thread anything. <clears throat> and then when you put your filter back on, once your gasket makes contact and you've got a good seat, you know, just hand tighten. I mean, there's no, no need to torque that up. Like I said, it's gonna get a little tighter as it heats up. Um, so that's pretty snug. And then lock your dipstick back down. And then we're gonna go over and refill um, the, the oil all right so we're going to fill our um, oil back up and uh, of course true to true to every uh, mechanics efforts right i couldn't find my funnel with the little flex hose that goes in and this kind of sits at an angle so i had to improvise um, picked up this little tip somewhere else on on youtube and we're just going to fill up our oil now i ordered an extra uh, jug of oil from amazon um, when I found them, I found a good deal. Um, I like to keep my smaller quarts um, on the boat just in case, you know, you need to add some oil for some reason. And uh, one of the things you definitely want to do after you um, first start your motor, either with the muffs on in your yard or out at the boat ramp, um, you want to check your oil level. Um, because what happens is it's going to take some of the oil to fill your filter back up. Um, and so you want to make sure you check your dipstick. It has a, a mark on there for safe operating range and, and low. So you want to make sure you check that and uh, keep your oil at the appropriate level. All right. Um, we'll wait for that to finish dripping in there. And we'll close everything back up and get ready to head out on the water. All right, folks. We filled up the oil to the appropriate level. Checked the dipstick and made sure that it's topped off. We're going to put our oil cap back on, our oil filler cap back in. And that's it. Oil has changed. Um, so that's about 15 minutes and one blue moon. So you can kind of time yourself as how far, it's, how long it's going to take you to do the job. And definitely will save you a couple hundred bucks. Okay, gang, an added bonus here. While I had the uh, motor cover off, I noticed I was looking at my fuel filter housing down here. And the fuel down in here in the filter looked pretty dark. Uh, so I wanted to change that fuel filter 
and I actually ordered these off of Amazon. There's a pack of like five fuel filters. I can't remember what the price was, but I'll put the link to the oil kit, the fuel filters, and the tools I used in the description below so that you can see those and have them for reference. So we're going to take this off and uh, take a look at that fuel filter and see what it looks like. Um, of course, you're going to need a 14 millimeter socket. Um, I did find that out by browsing through the tool kit here um, at RC Bassin. So yeah, you're going to need a 14 millimeter uh, socket and a ratchet. And then this uh, rubber grommet mounts up here. It's going to slide right out. It's not very hard to get out at all. Hold on to the top and then you want to gently break the canister loose. Unscrew it. Okay, there we go. We're going to dump that that gas out of there and of course I didn't dump it on the ground I put it into my old drain pan and then we're gonna just pull that fuel filter off um, and as you can see um, it's pretty dark pretty dark and dingy um, I mean it's not incredibly dirty but it could be cleaner um, so let's take a new one out of the pack and we'll compare the two and kind of see what they look like. So there is the new fuel filter out of the pack compared to the old one. I'll move over here in the light so you can see a little better. Um, but noticeably a difference. Um, and again, I'm not saying that it's, it's overly uh, or extremely dirty. It's not gummed up or anything, but it, it certainly wouldn't hurt to go ahead and change it. And this is only after one season of use. So... I'm going to go ahead and change that now. Um, no better time than the present. So let's go ahead and insert that filter back in there. Let's put the canister cover back on. And it's just a plastic canister. Um, and again, with all things plastic or threaded, you know, I'd rather take my time here. And make sure I've got this on correctly so that I don't mess up the threads on anything. And again, I'm just going to hand tighten that. And maybe I'll put the wrench on the socket on it a little bit just to make sure we don't have any leaks. Um, and then we'll mount it back up here. Make sure it's seated all the way back in. There we go. And the fuel filter has changed that quick and easy. All right, so just another maintenance tip here from RC Bassin on your 50 horsepower Mercury four-stroke uh, mounted on the um, uh, the uh, Tracker Classic XL. Um, just uh, another tip to save you some money. All right, till we uh, meet again. This is Ronnie from RC Bassin. Everyone, stay safe, tight lines, and hook them up.